New Year, New Release. S24 is cinema's first release for 2021, and it's packed with goodies. As with previous S releases, S24 is a subscription-only release. Let's see what's in store. Let's start with one of my favorite and most creative and fun features of this release. Three placement tools that will change how we work and interact with objects in our scenes. With the place tool, we can easily drag and drop one object onto another. The system is smart enough to figure out what needs to be done, and the only thing we need to worry about is making a killer model. All options we might need are there so we don't have to switch between different tools. We can easily rotate the asset, change the up direction, and of course scale the object to fit our needs. Building a model this way and figuring out the creative direction of the asset is now incredibly fun to do. There are cases though where we need to place more than just one object at a time, and this is where the scatter pen comes in. With it, we can basically draw an object or a collection of objects onto a surface. Here I have this maple tree, and I would like to scatter it onto the landscape. I'll first vary the size and rotation so not all trees look alike, and now we can just go ahead and start drawing. The cool thing is that we're not limited to what we just drew. We can further art direct the selection in order to get exactly the result we have in mind. If for example we don't want some of these trees, we can easily remove them by going into the Remove tab and then start brushing away the trees. Furthermore, we can adjust the placement of the trees by just enabling the Edit mode and then using the Place tool. As you can see, scenes like this one are now very easy to do. But the most exciting of all three placement tools by far is the Dynamic Place tool. It's amazing how easily and fast we can art direct our scenes with it. All we need to do is grab the objects we want to art direct and then click on the Dynamic Place tool. As you can see, our books immediately start interacting with the environment and with each other. We have several ways to manipulate the objects. For example, we can spread them out, and when we hit the Shift key, we can run a small simulation so that the books fall down in a natural way. We can keep doing that with all other objects in our scene, like these wooden blocks here. Doing something like this by hand would be incredibly tedious and also incredibly time-consuming. Now, with just a few clicks and rotations, we can truly get not only a nice random looking result, but most importantly a very art directable result. As you can see, just by moving the blocks around, we can clump the blocks in different ways and easily get a lot of different looks. I could just spend the rest of the video talking about these three placement tools alone, but as you can imagine, we have more to cover. And the next feature is the perfect companion to the placement tools. Think of the Asset Browser as the most flexible and powerful cataloging tool inside Cinema. All Macs and Assets are now available through the Asset Browser, and of course, whatever user-created libraries you might have can easily be converted to the new standard. But what makes the new Asset Browser so powerful? First off, there's no need to download gigabytes of data anymore. We can now browse everything without having to download a single thing, and when we do find something we like, we can just click the download button and have it ready to use. Another thing I absolutely love is how searchable the asset library is. It's so easy to find the exact thing we're looking for. All assets have tags now, so we don't even have to go through the list view here. I can search for example for the word woman, and all related assets show up. I can also search for obscure terms, for example I can search for assets that have certain colors in them, like blue or yellow, and all assets whether they're materials or objects or scenes will show up. We can go one step further and search for a specific style, so I can search for example for the word modern and all assets from coffee tables to lights and chairs show up or a combination of all types of keywords. For example, we can search for modern style assets that are made out of wood. We can also favorite specific assets, and when we do, they will show up in this special favorites category. Even better, if we have some specific uh, search terms, like assets that are wooden and use Expresso, we can save that as a smart search, and we don't have to go anymore through the different folders and find the specific assets. And since it's a smart search, whenever you or Maxon adds another asset that has these properties, it will automatically show up here. Another great browser feature that will unlock a lot of possibilities in projects with complicated production is the ability to save versions of an asset. So as the project goes on and the requirements change, our assets inside the browser can change as well. 
We just need to make sure to save a new version of the asset and both the new version and the older ones will be easily accessible and interchangeable. So if the need arises, we can always revert back to an earlier version. One of the greatest strengths of the Asset Browser though is the content. There's so much variety there and the quality is just on another level. Let's take object assets as an example. Aside from the incredible topology, clean UVs and detailed textures, these objects have a lot of flexibility and can act as a great learning tool. This candle holder, for example, is a great looking model that could exist in any architectural scene. But if you look closely, you will notice another detail. It comes with a rigged, animatable flame. So if we're interested, we can deconstruct how this effect was created and learn from some of the best C4D artists out there. Or let's take this chain here. We can use it as a static model, but if we need to animate it, it's already prepared and the only thing required is just a couple of keyframes. A lot of the objects are also built in a way that could give us multiple versions out of one model. Just by rotating the rig around, we can get different versions of it and in the process create a scene that doesn't look like it's made from the same object over and over again. Like every year, the library has been updated with a lot of useful assets. We have more motion capture data that cover common actions like cheering and clapping and going down and up the stairs, example scenes that show the fundamentals of character animation, objects that can be used in architectural visualizations, and so on and so forth. You can find the complete list of new assets in these cards here, but of course the best place to see all the great assets available is in the asset browser itself. The asset browser and the placement tools are the perfect combo. With the easy search of the new browser, the extensive collection of the assets, and the intuitive place tools, we can set up a scene with ease and most importantly, while having a lot of fun. But let's move on to the next feature, the scene manager. It's still a tech preview, but it's a great showcase of Cinema 4D's new core and how things are taking shape. In release 23, we saw the nodes expand to objects and not just materials. Of course, that can feel intimidating, but with S24, we now have a hierarchical representation of nodes that will feel instantly familiar. The scene manager is basically the spiritual successor of the classic object manager, but it goes beyond the possibilities of the object manager as we know it right now. Let's check out a really simple example. We can start adding objects to our scene and the asset manager by double clicking. This brings up a mini asset browser. I'll bring up a cube and then subdivide it a little bit more, which brings us to a really cool addition of the scene manager, the modifier stack. This opens up a whole new world of procedural geometry creation. With the modeling stack, we can keep adding things and creating more complex modeling operations. Let's add a random selection and use the extrude command. I don't want to extrude this area, so let's invert the selection. I'll add an invert selection operation here. And now let's apply a couple of materials. We can just drag and drop the materials onto the object and to apply them to different selections, we will need a set selection operation. Now the caps have the color red and everything else is blue. We just built a nodal setup without even realizing. If I bring up the nodal window, you will see all the nodes that were built and connected in the background. With the modifier stack, we have a live state of the object, where we can keep adjusting things and the model will adjust accordingly. We also have the ability to bring to the top the modeling operations that we're going to frequently adjust, so we don't have to constantly expand and collapse the stack. Objects are now also easier to decipher. For example, the SqueepNurbs asset has placeholders with dedicated fields for profile, path, and rail, making it easier to understand where each object needs to be placed. We can also drag and drop objects from the classic object manager into the new scene manager. With a scene manager and as an extension of the scene nodes, we have more modeling possibilities without sacrificing flexibility. For example, this setup is a result of several preset assets that were created without any use of code. Everything is still live and adjustable. Or this object here. We can modify everything and get different types of objects with incredible ease. And since we're on the topic of scene nodes, there are also some improvements there as well. We now have inspectors to help with debugging node assets, like the port inspector that displays the port value inside the node editor, or the data inspector, which is used for more complex data types such as arrays. 
Now on to the next feature of the release, animation. S24 adds powerful animation workflow enhancements and builds upon the animation features of R23. There's quite a few quality of life improvements and for character animators, more powerful keyframing and retargeting workflows. Let's take a look at keyframe animation enhancements first. There's now an improved curve evaluation mode which uses Bezier interpolation. We can now create animation curves that have more tension while using less keyframes, making ease-ins and ease-outs buttery smooth. Additionally, auto tangents are improved with a better evaluation of remove overshoot. A great addition for character animators is the tween tool. With it, we can easily create breakdown keyframes favoring the previous or next keyframe, and can even maintain the user curve and trajectory. The tween tool does more than interpolation, as it can help to adjust the timing of animations as well. We can easily adjust the spacing between keyframes and do ripple adjustments. The pose library was also enhanced based on user feedback. Tag parameters are now supported and libraries and poses can be copied and moved across different databases. Drag and drop interaction was improved and we can now switch between database and library without leaving the thumbnail view. Timeline modes were often a cause of confusion. Now they become much clearer with all possible track options collected into one filter menu. The user can now easily revert to the default timeline behavior, switch to the most often used modes, and save new presets that fit a certain workflow. Animation tracks were enhanced with track looping. This automatically generates end keyframes that produce loops with less keyframes and effort. As we adjust the curve, the animation adjusts accordingly to ensure a seamless result. Besides hand keyframe workflows, motion capture workflows were also improved. The Character Solver has continued development and now supports position, scale, and user data in addition to rotation. We also have more control than ever before with strength sliders per components. We can use those to adjust the motion in specific parts of a character, or even mix different motion sources. We also get to see the introduction of a very flexible color rig. It's a character object template that makes it really easy to rig anything with four wheels. We can easily pose and animate the car while the wheels collide with the ground and roll automatically. Additionally, we can animate the car along a spline and have it auto steer, have the chassis vibrate, have spring suspension, and more. That is quite a list, but there's no time to waste. We have a couple more features to cover. Magic Bullet Looks is now updated to version 5, which offers a more powerful preset system and lot support as well as features for better color handling and manipulation. One great new addition to Magic Bullet 5 is the Color Remap tool, which can easily remap colors of finished renders to match brand guidelines. Viewport got a few updates as well. The Windows version of Cinema now uses DirectX, and from a platform agnostic side, we have some helpful additions, like shadow hinting, which helps us see where our objects are in relation to each other. We now also have an easy toggle in the options menu to disable and enable safe frames, and on the filter menu, the ability to hide everything else other than geometry when playing back the animation. This one in particular is one of my favorite additions. No need to toggle filters anymore just to preview an animation. Last but not least, we can now import USD files containing materials, and node-based PBR materials will be generated based on the included material definition and textures. The Substance Engine was also updated, and the same goes for the SketchUp format support and GoZi system. And that's it, we covered pretty much the bulk of S24's feature set. Make sure to visit Maxon's website for more details. Now the only thing left to do is to start downloading. Have fun, and I'll see you in the next one.